All right, so hopefully everyone's here. So we got a, a small group today, so, you know, group setting. Okay, all right, class. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I do. Denny. Hi, Denny. Good morning. Okay. All right, so uh, we're going back to this book right here. Uh, going to talk about extreme values. So this is applications of derivatives. So all that stuff that we've been doing were all the derivatives. Now this is where those rules come into play. So being able to do the chain rule, the product, the quotient, and all that other stuff, um, this comes into play. So along with doing this, you can see why we do a lot of these things. So this set of notes is going to be just a lot of definition. So absolute extreme values. Let f function be a function with the domain of d. f of c is, okay, a, absolute maximum on d if and only if in that interval is for all x in that d, in the domain. So in the interval that I have, that the point that I'm referring to, okay, c, right, the x value in this case, or they're referring to it as a c value, that there is a point somewhere there that is the absolute highest of everything else within that whole domain of the problem. You'll, you'll see in a second, I'll, I'll explain this one uh, with, the, with the diagram. I believe it's like two more down, there's a diagram for it. Absolute minimum, same thing, value of D, okay, if and only if that it is going to be less than all other values for the function in the entire domain. Absolute, also referred to as global, okay, the entirety of it. Maximum minimum values are called absolute extrema, okay, and we often use the term absolute or global and just say maximum minimum. Okay, so that's important because there's also going to be the local. So here is an example right here. Over the interval, so if f is continuous on a closed interval, now closed, that means that there is a bracket and I must include the endpoints. That is key right there. Bracket must include the endpoints. It's almost like you might want to write that down. Must include the endpoints. So whenever I'm doing these, I have to check the endpoints. And we're going to have some problems like that here in a minute. Okay, then F has both a maximum minimum value and both a maximum and a minimum on that interval. So if you look right here, maximum and minimum at interior points. So in this curve, it is from A to B inclusive. Inclusive, that's important. Okay. So brackets. So right here at x2 is going to be my maximum. At x1 is going to be my minimum right there. So on the second one right here, we have maximum minimum at the endpoints. This is where we check it because everything in between there, I have brackets here. So that means I include the endpoints and I have to check the endpoints when I don't have a graph. I have to plug those in to see if it's greater than everything else in my function. All right, next one here, uh, down here, um, maximum at an interior point, minimum at an end point. So maximum is somewhere in between right here. Minimum is going to be at the end point where in this case it's going to be A. This one over here, I'm going to have that over this function, I have a minimum at an interior point, but a maximum at one of the endpoints there. That yes, no, maybe, possibly. Did I say too many words? Too early in the morning. All right, tater tot. Come on, come on. You got this. You got this. Okay. Now, using this graph, hopefully this graph right here makes everything make more sense. Absolute minimum would be the lowest point over the entire interval, okay? Over the entire domain of this. There's absolute minimum, no smaller value of anywhere, 
and it's also referred to as a local minimum because if I have multiple minimums, I have a wave going up here, so I'm going to have a minimum and a maximum, which is the global or the absolute, like right there, that is going to be an absolute maximum, nothing greater than that. Okay? Absolute minimum, nothing less than that. Now, as it goes up, it goes to a local maximum. Now, if you notice, it's because it's a wave. It goes up and down. So that means that in this area, that is going to be a local maximum. This area right here, local minimum, it's going to wave, it's going to curve going back up. Now, these are super important. These are super important because the first derivative in the basicness of derivatives, what is the derivative actually give me? The slope, right? The slope of the tangent line, right? It's going to give me the slope. So all in all, we're looking for the slope. Now, we're looking at the function here. So the slope, as I'm going, I'm going to change colors on this. So the slope right here is going positive, 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 positive. What happens right here? It goes to zero. Very good. My slope changes to zero. So I will know that because this slope goes to zero, I'm going to have a change. It's going to go from an increasing slope to a decreasing slope. So that means in between those two numbers, in between a positive and a negative number, there's always zero. So I'm going to have that the derivative, the slope must be zero somewhere in there. Again, right here, slope of zero. And this one here, it is going to do the same thing, but this one's not going to give me a slope of zero because this is a pointy point. You guys remember when we're talking about when, when we go up? No? Limits? Okay. We'll, we'll talk about it again later on. So this is going to be a pointy point. This is not, so you cannot take a derivative at that point right there, right? You cannot balance. We're not going to get a slope of zero at that point. So it's changing from a negative to a positive slope without going to zero first. That's the same thing as this thing right here. So it's not going to give me a slope of zero there. And here's another local, local minimum as it goes down, and it is the end point. All right, any questions so far on, on this? No? So local extreme values, C V interior point of the domain of the function, then F of C is a local maximum value of C, if and only if, okay, right here, it is going to be greater than all x's in some open interval containing C. That means in a small window, so not over the whole domain, but a small portion of the domain, it is only going to be the maximum at a certain part. Same thing for minimum right here. So that means it's going to be less than everything else that is near that or over that interval. A function f has a local maximum or local minimum at an endpoint c if the appropriate inequality holds for all x in some half open domain uh, interval containing c. So what that means is open domain or half open, that means that it's not closed domain. Bracket is closed domain. Half open would mean a bracket and a parentheses. That's super important. It only works with that. So if it was me, I would write that down, but most people don't. They just stare off, zone out, and not write that down. So, local extreme values. If a function f has a local maximum value or local minimum value at the interior point of c of its domain, then f prime, so the derivative, must be equal to zero if it has a local. That's what I was talking about. So, if it goes up to a maximum and then it comes back down, that means the slope at some point became zero. 
That's important. And we'll find out how they exist. A point in the interior of the domain of function where the derivative is equal to zero or f prime does not exist is a critical point. So the pointy point where it goes to a point but doesn't go to zero, so it right there, that one would be a critical point or where that one right there does not exist. So like holes, okay, or, or someplace where it is undefined. So So where it is undefined is important. Stationary point. A point in the interior of the domain of a function f at which f prime is equal to zero, so that means derivative is equal to zero, is called a stationary point of f. So on the interior, somewhere in the domain, where that is going to be equal to zero is referred to as just a stationary point. Candidate test for absolute extrema. The absolute extrema of a function f on a closed interval can be determined by evaluating the function at each critical number and at each endpoint of the interval. Okay, so we evaluate. What does the word evaluate mean? What does evaluate mean? Solve for or plug it in, right? So, basic definition plug in that x value into the original function. Plug in that x value to the original function. That's what that means. So, plug in the x value at the original function and at each endpoint of the interval. So, you're going to plug in every x that is a critical point and Endpoint. Both ends. So if you get one critical point, this is important, if you get one critical point in the interval, you, that means you're plugging in three times. You're plugging in the open interval. So if it's from A to B, right here. So if it looks like this, you're going to plug in the a value into the first function, the original function. You're going to plug in the b value into the original function. You're going to plug in the critical point, which would be a c, in the original function. So that's what that means. You have to plug them all in. You're going to get a maximum. You're going to get a minimum. And you're going to get a local. maximum of these values is the absolute max. The minimum of these values is the absolute minimum. This is known as the candidates test. You're going to see this one popped up on the homework. It's just mentioned as a candidates test. Find the absolute maximum minimum of the values of this on the interval from negative 1 to, ne to positive 2. Okay, let's go through. And first, I'm going to do the derivative. Find the derivative, so if my function f of x is equal to 3x to the 2 thirds, do the derivative. What do you do with the exponent? You multiply. multiply it out front, right? Multiply by out front, so 3 times 2 thirds, 2. Yes, very good. So it's going to be 2. So f prime of x is going to be 2x to the what? What do I do with my exponents? Subtract by 1. Subtract 1. In this case, it's going to be minus 3 over 3 which gives me negative 1 over 3. Yes? No? Maybe? Yeah. Okay. So, 
Now, step by step, take my derivative and set it equal to zero, right? I'm, I'm going to take the derivative because that's a critical point, right? So on all my testing, I need to find where that critical point, where the slope is equal to zero. So I'm going to do zero equals two over, because I'm going to rewrite this, cube root of x. Now, um, I rewrote this for a reason, so hopefully you could identify the problem we're going to have. What can we not have here, Lindsay? From my derivative, what can I not have here? All right, Denny, you want to help her out? What can I not have here? Radical? Okay. There's something about the radical. What am I not allowed to have in that radical? This one I'm allowed to. Why? It's a third root. I'm allowed to have negatives in a third root. But this radical right here, where is it at? The denominator. It's in the denominator. What can I not have in the denominator? Four. What cannot be in the denominator? Only Chuck Norris could do it. Divide by zero. Can divide by zero, right? So the bottom cannot equal zero. That's important. It cannot equal zero. So that yeah, that that was a joke back in the day. You know, Chuck Norris. You know Chuck Norris counted to infinity twice. <sighs> anyway. My jokes are wasted. Anyway, I cannot have a zero here, right? So I could try and solve for this, but if I try to move the x out of the denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides, and it would still just give me zero, zero equals two, right? So there is, I cannot get a value of x in, the, in between there. But I do get a critical point. x cannot equal zero. So that is going to be a critical point there. So since I don't have any other points, I have three values now to plug in. My interval is from negative one to two. Uh, do I have another slide for this? No, I do. Okay, there we go. So we're going to plug this in, so it's going to be f, so my original one of negative 1, all right, let's do some mental math here. We know that x is being raised to the second power, and then cube rooting, right? So this one right here, since I'm plugging in negative 1, what is negative 1 squared? 1, what's the cube root of 1? One? 1. 1. Times 3? Three. 3. There we go. So f of negative 1 is going to give me 3. Next one is f of my critical point, which is 0. Okay. Right here, so 0 squared, 0, what's the cube root of 0? Zero? 0 times 3? Zero. 0. There we go, 0. Next one is going to be f of my other endpoint of 2.
So let's go through, do the math. So 2 squared is? 4. 4. The cube root of 4? Cube root of 4. It's just cube root of 4 times 3. And so it's going to be 3 times the cube root of 4. And for approximation's sake, let's take out the calculator so we could do this. And now, for all these problems, they're all going to be calculator enabled. Okay, here we go. So, three parentheses, two, close, raised to the two over three. And I get 4.762. Now, in this, a lot of times, so especially when you're doing calculated approximations, you're going to use three decimal points. So, 4.762. Hit, hit, uh, control, enter. <coughs> okay. So 4.762. There you go. So 4.762. Now, let's answer some questions to go along with this. Maximum. Absolute maximum. Okay, so we'd say when x equals 2, right? Absolute max. Absolute max. All right, what about my absolute minimum? Zero, right? And this being on a closed interval, that means that this would be a local, you know, max in this case. Now, let's see what the calculator says about my graph. So, 3x raised to 2 over 3. There we go. So, if you notice, right here, and I'm going to... Let's see. Let me hit tab, arrow up. No, I could do the. There it is. That is from negative one, comma, my comma is right here, to two. Ah, didn't let me do it. Did it let, did it, let it do it on yours? Probably not. Anyway. Did not like that. I was able to do it before, so uh, now I'm like, oh, okay. So starting at negative one, which would be here, 
and then this one goes to positive 2, which would be higher up over here. Questions? No? Maybe? Okay, and all of these are going to be calculator inclusive. So I expect you to be using the calculator and I expect you to re return the calculator that you borrowed, Denny. You still got a yellow one. Oh, okay. All right, so along with that, let's take a look at, so for our homework, we're going to go and go to the My Lab for the rest of this homework. So make sure you all like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification button. Support my channel.